Uh, first will be 2017-10, Richard and Kelly Lobel, 37 Jaffrey Court. Uh, second will be 2017-07, uh, Shana Liebman, 3 Cedar Lawn Road. Third will be 2015-32, Ardsley Country Club. Oh, no. That's off no, no, I think we have, good. we have a resolution. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, they're, they're going to come late? All right, so then, then we'll leave that, as, oh. leave that as the end. Okay. So, sorry, then number three will be 2017-11, uh, Tolo and Tag, 23 Deerman Close. Four will be 2017-17, uh, Cuff, 3 Oak Street. Fifth will be 2017-16, Steinberg, 5 Hugh Hill Lane. Uh, sixth will be 2017-15, Roos, 24 South Buckout Street. Uh, seventh will be 2017-18, uh, Cohen, 21 Matheson Park. And last uh, will be 2015-32, Arsley Country. So before we begin, though, so everybody's up to date on their taxes. Yes. Right, and then we also have minutes from the June meeting. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at the minutes? Any comments? I think you know, we circulated, circulated them, made some corrections on them, some edits. So, can I have a motion then to adopt the minutes? So moved. Second? Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the minutes from June are, are approved. Uh, so, the first item then is 2017 10, uh, Lobel 37, Jaffrey Court. Oh. Hey, just in time. <laughs> Hi, uh, Douglas McClure for the Lobels at 37 Jaffrey Court. I've come back after our last meeting, answered the majority of uh, Han's questions, I believe, um, including the breakdown for the coverage calculations. Um, do I, you want me to go through the project, Dan? I don't, I don't think so. I think they're, uh, Doug Hahn had a letter or a memo with their four or five items. Uh, yes, those are easily addressable. I actually emailed uh, a response to them today. Uh, item number one, I've already added the name of the surveyor uh, to the drawings, and I'll resubmit those. Uh, Sign and seal drawings we'll also submit. Um, item three. It does appear will require railing at these new bluestone steps um, and the clients deciding what kind of railing they want now. Okay. So when I file... Yeah, just if you can put on the set for this approval to set railing. Sure. And then we'll deal with it at your idea. Perfect. Uh, the light rectangular object in zone one on drawing LA1 um, is a some kind of accidental remnant that the landscape uh, designer put on there and didn't delete it's it, it, I think it had text in it or something okay, so, so it's, it's not covered. it's not coverage it's, um, and the bench is a furniture bench it's not permanent structure okay. and uh, did you have any other comments on this I, I, I asked this question I asked this question last time and I think you gave us out but I don't remember it doesn't show up the, the French drain in the driveway where does it go uh, the trench drain actually there's a whole uh, drainage system that comes around and comes out this riprap area. That was all designed and approved when they did their deck oh, okay. back I in. I thought it was success, right? Whenever. Right, right in. Any other comments? No? Uh, and you're, you're okay with the... Yeah, my concern was What's on, on yes. this in the village right away? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any comments from anyone in the audience? No? Okay, then, Samaria, do you have a, a resolution on this item? No. Yes. Whereas in June 2017, Richard and Kelly LaBelle applied for site development plan approval to modify the hardscape and landscaping at their house at 37 Jaffray Court, which is located in the Village's View Preservation Overlay District. And whereas Han Engineering reviewed the plans and in a memorandum dated June 6, listed a number of issues, many of which were addressed in a subsequent submission and the planning board held a public hearing on the application on June 7th and July 11th. 
whereas the improvements would not impact the view of the Hudson River from neighboring properties and adjacent rights of way. It's a type 2 action under secret, so it doesn't require environmental review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the planning board grants the application for site development plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawings entitled front side entry planting and hardscape prepared by Hudson Landscape Contractors and Lobel Residence drawings prepared by MC Architecture subject to compliance with the items listed in the Han Memorandum dated July 10th, 2017. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Uh, any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right, the next item is 2017-07, uh, Liebman 3 Cedar Lawn Road. Uh, good evening, my name is Sam Vieira. I am the project architect. Um, as I pointed out in my cover letter, uh, originally when this application came before your board back in May, the house was on the market, and during that period of submission and responses from on engineering, the closing occurred. So we've resubmitted an application, simply changing the name of the owner. Uh, the previous owners continue to be responsible for the outcome of you know, this situation. Um, so I'm here today to continue with the application. And it's, uh, in essence, what happened was it was a small um, stone patio at the rear of the house and uh, the owners extended it because there's a lot of rock ledge out there uh, to create a larger more usable uh, patio um, they did that without uh, permits and so therefore we're here in an attempt to get approval from this board for the expansion of the patio in an effort to legalize it um, we've revised the site plan with the original comments from uh, Han Engineering and also as outlined on uh, my um, my cover letter uh, the additional square footage of patio increases the coverage of an already non-conforming uh, piece of property so uh, if we were to move forward we would need zoning board approval a variance for additional coverage any comments from anybody on yes. the board uh, the French drain along the right side, it, it has a drainage pipe to um, to the surface. To the surface, that's correct. And it's very close to the neighboring property and uphill to the neighboring property. Uh, how, how do you keep the drainage from going to the other property? So, th I mean, the concept is that most of the water will be caught in this French drain and absorbed. Yeah, I know. Then it goes and to then a the pipe that's a couple of feet pipe. to the neighboring property, uphill to the neighboring property. Right. And the neighboring property, the high point of the neighboring, the house sits right here, and it all slopes away from the house. So even if there is some overflow that makes it towards and over the wall, which is because the, the topography is such that it's coming down this way. There is a wall there? There's, this is a retaining wall. And the topography of this neighbor. Which side has the, is the high side of the wall? The neighbor side. So you're correct in assuming that potentially the water could go down to the neighbor. But it, or through the wall. Or, or, or through the wall. But the topography is such that it should continue to run either alongside the wall, any wall well, that does. I looked at the topography. Right. It slopes from left to right. Left to right. But the house sits here, and this is all open. And though we don't have the topography of the neighbors, the topography continues. So any water that might come out from the outlet will continue to go across. Chuck, did you review? That's true. I mean, it, it's going in that direction anyway, and now we're going to have infiltration. So I it's going to be a benefit. It's not a direct catch and release. It's more of an overflow yeah. in case of these very large storms. Under normal rainfall, the water theoretically should never make it to that outlet. I mean, did they supply numbers on this in terms of what kind of storm would be handled by French drain? Um, it's, it's already a rock surface underneath, so it's, it's, it's not already true. sold along. So we thought it would be best. There's really no way to tie it into the system or put another system in for this patio. So through review, we thought bringing it out to the front and the French drain system uh, would <clears throat> get rid of the water that was impacting the wall and bring it out to the front. Only, like, if you go out there and look at it, from the street level, you can see it can impact the neighbor's property. 
until three or four feet from the curb if it ever makes it that far. Right. So the French drain, you accept, you expect uh, some infiltration in the drain itself. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. in the winter months for sure. And it will say when it's frozen solid. <laughs> <laughs> well, another point is that this is naturally bedrock. There's very little coverage here, so the fact that the, drench, the French drain will actually exist will prevent water that would naturally have run off regardless. Uh, you know, so it's going to take it into the French drain, it's going to channel it channel the front, it, absorb it, the right, absorb it. The outlet is simply an overflow, like all <coughs> systems. It's not meant like a, a normal leader drain that catches everything that comes off the roof and shoots it out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's simply an overflow. You guys are, you guys, uh, Doug, and Ed, you both all right with this? Yep. Doug. Any comments from anyone in the audience? We looked at a couple of different yep. things. Yep. It seemed like the best property. Okay. Uh, then, Mary, did you have a yeah, I did prepare a resolution. resolution. I, I made it in um, in Lee's name, just so the file would be confused. But previously, there was an application by Silver, but since you put in a whole new application, I just treated it as, as a as a um, new one. Um, whereas in July 2017, Shana Liebman applied for site development plan approval to legalize a patio that had been constructed by a previous owner on a property at 3C who wanted to install a curtain drain. And whereas the patio requires a variance for coverage, Han Engineering reviewed the plans and in a memorandum dated yesterday listed two items to be addressed in revised drawings. Planning Board held a public hearing on the application tonight. The actions are type 2 and reaction under SECRA. It resolved that the Planning Board grants the application for site development plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawing entitled Expansion of Rear Stone Patio at Liebman Residence, prepared by Samuel Vieira Architect, subject to one, obtaining an area of variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and two, compliance with the items listed in the Han Memorandum dated July 3rd. All right, can I have a motion to approve? Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Good night. Uh, next item is 2017-11, uh, Lucy Cotolo and Christopher Tate, 23 Dearman. Close. Walco. I'm here from Opechich Architects, representing Lucy Cotullo and Christopher Tay for the property at 23 Dearman Close. So in response to last, the last meeting when we were here, the main, well, one of the main issues was addressing the building setback limit in the back um, in order for which we've shifted the building and cleared that building setback. So, and we have moved the driveway and changed the orientation of the entrance to the garage, which eliminates any disruption back here with the building and keeps it all within what is previously established as part of the subdivision plat as the building envelope. Uh, additionally, we have uh, enhanced the elevations or the exterior elevations, which should help illustrate more clearly what is going on in terms of the siting of the building in order to maximize the, the use of the existing topography and create as uh, little visual impact on the street and then also to the neighbors as much as possible and work with what we have in order to amplify what we're doing with the building. Um, additionally, we've provided the landscaping layout with screening for the neighbors and have responded to uh, some of the, con or a number of the concerns that were brought up in the engineering letter with respect to 
showing utilities and illustrating that we're connecting where it was originally indicated as part of the subdivision plot so that we're not interfering or trying to modify what was previously approved. And I'll just uh, address the elephant in the room about the trees, which were cut down in advance. And unfortunately, um, that was a little bit of over-enthusiasm on the part of the contractor that the client had hired. And his or their directive was to clean up the property, which was previously used and approved as a dumping site during the development of the subdivision. So the bulk of the trees in this area that were removed were have been within the limits of what the building siting is. And so I lost the dial again. And so those would have eventually needed to come down anyway, um, following our approval, obviously, during the normal course of action. The two questionable trees in the front, the one here, which is directly on the rock, had a very shallow root system of about two feet or less, which caused great concern to the homeowners and its uh, potential for collapse or damage during a severe storm event. And this tree here was in bad shape due to the fact that this was, as I stated previously, an approved and used as a dumping site during the um, con development of the rest of the subdivision. Now, the client understands that we there are some mitigating measures that have to be taken place in terms of um, filling in in order to offset some of what was lost there. And so we're... Uh, amenable. Okay. Any comments from anyone on the board? The, the plants didn't change. Did the design of the house change? I mean, it's a very modern house compared to... It is to a very modern house. The design of the house per se didn't change. The main change was in the orientation of the back here with the garage in order... Because previously we had the access coming into the back which would have, uh, which was prohibited because of the uh, building construction limit setback. So the orientation of the entrance to the garage was modified in order to facilitate shifting the building forward slightly and then allowing for the entrance on the side to preserve that building setback limit. But the main um, aesthetic of the house and the layout as was previously Submitted didn't change significantly, although the elevations are now clearly um, AutoCAD and therefore more uh, defined than they were in the previous um, design submission. Can you go over the, the defined elevations, especially about the rock? Top rock? George, can you pull the microphone down, please? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> can you, can, you, can you go through the elevations with the rock, the rock outcropping, please? Yeah. So, um, I hope you want to yeah. speak. Yeah, sure. you want to speak. Good evening. Uh, Rad Opercic, uh, principal of Opercic Architects. Um, so the, the, the upper elevation, which is our plateau, is the, the top of the, of the rock at 444. Uh, and that, that is our upper elevation. Um, the entrance, uh, it, it's an upside down house. The bedrooms are low and the main space is up high. So the, the main living space is on the upper level, uh, which includes the, the living room, kitchen, dining room, family room, and, 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 and an office. And down below, we have the master suite under this wing, and the, the children's bedrooms are underneath the garage in the lower level below the garage. And the entrance is at 437, um, and the, lower, the lowest point of the building, which is the gym, in this Location is at uh, 428. I was actually asking about the actual elevations that were done. The building elevations Correct. or the, or the site? Yeah, not the site okay. elevations, but we we'll get to that. The upper elevation is at 447. You know, here's the thing that I'm looking for is that before you came, before you came in with sort of atmospheric uh, elevations, and, elevations, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I was trying to figure out how you're dealing with, how you're integrating with this rock outcropping. And I don't see that necessarily in, in that elevation. So I'm looking for, what does this look like from the street? What am I looking at? How is this building sitting on this, this landscape that's there? Mm -hmm. uh, and I, don't, I don't see it. So maybe you have it somewhere else. There's a second elevation. Page one to open up. The rock that you're speaking of. You need to use the microphone for the front. Oh, sorry. Microphone girl. Do you have the other drawings that you did last time, oh, no. the elevations that you did last time? Uh, no, I don't have those with us. <coughs> the rock that we're... Okay. The rock that you're referring to is down, is here, and it's down at the 440. It's below where our upper level floor is. All right, so it would be living. Oops, one more back. Right, so that rock is going to be down in here. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in knowing what this looks like from the street, okay? And I don't know if I see that. I think you have to go to the next elevation. Well, this is a street elevation. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. I, I, your other drawing that you showed, mm -hmm. which you're going to, someone's going to get out, we commented that, that it was... It was a little vague about that, and we asked for it to be a little more detailed. So that's what I was looking for, is to comprehend how this, since you didn't, there's no model, there's nothing else, how are you dealing with this rock outcropping in your house? And well, I don't see that necessarily. Okay, right, so this, this is not, this is not, uh, this is not far enough back. So as you can see, this retaining wall, so this is the elevation, this is the elevation of the building, but it's cutting through the upper terrace. And, and right. what you're looking for is further back. Yeah, that's more of a that's, sectional that's, elevation to me, right. and what I'm looking for is more it's of from the street. From the street, what someone's going to see this house, and specifically that retaining wall, okay, which I don't was very uh, vaguely mentioned on the other drawings, and we asked for more clarity. So, okay, so we'll, we'll have to do that. Uh, but basically, this is going to be a, a dry wall, retaining wall, which at, and at this point, it starts off at, you know, seven, eight feet, and then it works its way into the rock. So you can see, you know, there's a lot to do drawing of that so you can well, excuse, well, excuse me if you go to sheet a-2.1 the lower elevation i think is what i'm concerned about or i think george is talking about because as far as i can make out that's the elevation that i'm going to see as i'm driving up the hill towards Deerman close and, and I'm, I'm rounding the bend and then your neighbor is to the left and i'm going to be looking at your main entrance there and that wall which is about 17 feet high well, it's seven, it's seven feet at this point. We have about 17 feet at the road. No, no, this is this is 14 feet. Well, that's how do you get that? I mean, you have you have 445 at the top of that second little wall, and you're down. But this, but this wall is set back four feet from this one, so it's the area back. Well, look, you're down you're down at 437 midway down the wall, so you got to figure that that's another at least eight feet down. So I'm figuring you're at 429 at the bottom, and you're at 445 at the top. Uh, 437. You're 437 to the right. Well, you, your, your own elevation no, I'm, I'm shows 40, at 437. 437. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if you look... So that is a 7 feet. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm thinking that, that looks like it's about a 17-foot high wall mm -hmm. that you're going to see as you're driving up the road coming yes, towards yes. the house. And I think uh, that no, is a bit overpowering. We uh, actually have had several, many, who have come in with new designs here and had issues with walls half, even a third this size, because it just becomes a monolith there. And what we're looking for is some way to integrate with the natural aesthetic that's up there, as opposed to putting something that is then kind of empowering over that landscape. So that's why I wanted to further understand how you were 
kind of we integrate this. We're this as a feature. Right, and I, I think that... And that, that, that's an important element of our design, so... I think know. that what we're looking for is really from the, again, from the street level, is not to have this as a walled-in compound, but is somehow is integrated with the landscape that's up there and the, and the specific rock outcroppings which exist all over the place so that we don't have just this vestige of what's up there and then something else that is completely overpowering as what you say you're planning to do. So from a bold perspective, that's why I was looking for more clarity of, of understanding what you were doing. So oh, for, for us, and you know, we, we will show it to you in the model and, and additional drawings, but for us this was a retaining wall that uh, creates this upper terrace for us, which is very important, and a feature wall that kind of that leads you into the entrance of the building. So we were embracing that, that wall. Right, and, we're, and at least me specifically is, is trying to figure out how this relates to the street, how this relates to the, the village, and, and how we can incorporate the, the various aspects of this site and this, this hill up there so it doesn't look like you sort of just did what it ignores those things. So I, I would strongly well, no, I, ask you to, to look at if there are ways that you can mitigate uh, <coughs> vertical walls that are 15 feet high that then have a railing above that that make it so that it's, you know, it's a two-story wall. I, I don't know of walls like that that exist other than walls that are, let's say, at most 10 feet along Broadway. I, I don't know of places like this. Perhaps you do, but I don't. I think we've got to find a way to reduce the impact of that wall, at least, because that house is sitting at the highest point of that development. Uh, and, and on top, so your house is then on top of the highest point. So as you drive up, the first thing you see is the 17 or 15 foot wall, and then sitting on top of the wall is the two stories of the house. And that is going to be sitting. No, one, one, one story. One story. Uh, but, but you're already considerably higher than your neighbor to the left, to the west of you. Uh, yeah, because the, well, you the know, property but, drops off precipitously there the, the, right. because of that rock outcrop. So I think you've got to you've got to do something to make it blend in a bit more to the site and the surroundings, and to soften the impact as one approaches this house and as one is going to see it from various locations on the street and from the neighboring houses. We, we have a, you know, what, what, we, what we, the design is, is working with the existing rock outcrop, right? The rock is sloping away in this direction and our building is stepping down and following the site so that we're not digging 20 feet into the rock to, to accomplish so it, it is working with the site, and, and this retaining wall is an important feature of the design. We will look at it, see how we can blend that in uh, 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 more than currently it is, but it is something that's important to us in terms of the feature. Yeah, so in my opinion, what you want to do is, if, if you feel very strongly about it, then I think it's, it's up to you to sort of present it in a way that, that gets your point across to the people that are concerned about it and that that will become less concerned um, but I think it's clear to at least from two of us three three, three four, four four there's five, big five. there's big concerns with the walls these walls that you're presenting that you think are important as a, a feature for this so it, it, the onus really is on you that's why when the atmospheric drawings were done we wanted to understand what you were really doing because those seemed a lot different than the plans. So, well, I mean, at, when that what point was made, the what I understood to be the question was what the relationship was of the building to where the rock is located, not necessarily what how the perception of the building is on the street. So, I didn't. It wasn't clear that the, what we were looking for was a, an elevation of this that showed where we were on the street and how that all looked. Because we well, were working you, with the, but the now photography. You know, so that was the well, this is the first time I'm hearing it. I love the wall, but I hear the concern. We'll work through it. 
Any other comments? Yeah. <clears throat> Let's go over these trees again. How many trees were cut down? Two trees. No, not two. Well, more than two. Uh, most recently, but there were several that were cut down farther back on the site. Two, right. Two, so two, it's two. the, as I understand it, the five that were within the building envelope, and then these two in the front um, that we discussed. All right. And in addition, right now, there's a pile of construction debris and large boulders sitting under that large tree on the west side of the property. In, the, in, yeah, in the drip line of that tree. Mm -hmm. That really needs to get out of here. And I think you're really, I think I, what I'd like to see, too, there's another tree back there that's dying, and you might want to take a look at that. I think you should have an arborist go out there and take a look at those mm -hmm. trees and, and see what the condition is and what needs to be done to those trees, if anything. And, and the consequence of cutting down the five trees in the back? And is there a consequence to that legally? The uh, consequence will be on the permit stage. At the permit It'll be a stage. violation. It'll be a violation to the permit. Well, I, what about putting trees back? The mitigation is the sport's responsibility. I mean, there are citizens in the village who can't take down a dead tree without no, the owner's no. permit process. Yeah. Right. And people that do take down the trees have to mitigate. They'll be mitigated. Mitigation will be decided by this board instead of the trade commission. Okay. Right. So, so you'll need a landscape plan too, in addition. Right. Well, we do have a beginning, a beginning, a beginning of the non-landscape landscape plan, and we were providing uh, what was, at least as a first pass, a significant um, addition to the property in terms of trees and other landscape features, in order to offset some of what was taken down. Now, is there a way back to the wall? Back? Is, there, is yes. there a way of terracing it to make it look softer and planting on each level? We'll, we'll look at that. Okay. Yeah. We'll look at that. Oh, you have a microphone. Yeah, that, that would be one of the things that we'll look at as, as, as a possible solution. Because it is. It's, your eye is drawn to it whether you want it to be or not. That's the first thing you're going to see. You're not going to see the house. You're going to see the wall. Well, I mean, clearly that depends on the approach and, you know. Well, 99% of the people are going to be approaching from the, the, the direction this where you direction? see the wall. Right. They're not going to come out that other hill. Oh, I came, I came the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I came this way when I approached. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple other comments. It talks about in... in uh, the engineer's letter, mm -hmm. a variance may be required for coverage and a variance for height. I mean, have you addressed those? Because this board I, will not look favorably upon variances for a brand new building. Uh, yes, we had that discussion with the building inspector already. We um, are working through the height question. We were under the, I was our understanding that we were meeting the 15% slope criteria, which would allow the additional height that we're indicating. So we're working through with the building department to either confirm that what we're understanding is correct and then our height can stay, or conversely, if that's not the case, make the adjustments in height so that no variance is required. And similarly, with the coverage, there was a question about a couple of areas. Uh, when I looked at it following receiving the comments, I believe most of the areas that are in question have already been calculated. They just weren't hatched, which is just a graphic um, problem. But we'll make sure that we're within compliance so that no variances are required. And then at number 15, on Doug's list, the proposed walls on the property to the east on drawing C1 will require an easement. Right. So if the board could give us a little bit more clarity on that. If, could, you, could you just point out those walls? Well, I'm assuming. The other drawings, the engineer's drawings. The engineer's drawings, OK. Yep, and then flip side. Okay, so we're talking about the ones on the right side of the driveway. These guys here. And the one that loops it comes around onto the property. This guy here. Yeah. Are you proposing walls on the neighboring property? Well, these and we're so these walls were suggested because it's not clear what I mean. We only have the grading on the survey to a certain point. And so there was concern that where we were showing the driveway elevations that some 
retainage might be needed, and that was going to be taking place within the uh, driveway easement. Well, but that where you're proposing those walls is the easement for the next lot's access. With, within that 30 feet, and it's right. not. 100% clear that these that we actually need these in order to accomplish what we're doing with the driveway and so what I'm taking from the comment or the feedback is that uh, the object is to accomplish or our object should be to accomplish the driveway without the addition of any walls within that driveway easement right. on, your property. on the property your property yes you're adding coverage to the neighboring lot yes I I, I, I saw the coverage no with the walls. What, yeah. So we'll work it out so that we don't need to do that. Okay. But, but this wall, this wall here is not a problem as long as we but have the coverage for that wall, right? We would prefer it not in the, uh, as long as the building up a little. Right. So if we can, if right. we keep the retainage, if we need it at the back of the Just property of within our building, approved building envelope, approved building envelope that wall is fine as long as provided we have the coverage to accommodate it. Okay. And then just, just, I'm sorry, go ahead. And also, so, but the, the wall along the property line here is not an issue, right? It's it's a, the easement. Right. right, okay. It's on your property. It's just, it's just, it's on, yes. Yeah. We're talking about these walls Yes. Here. That was only a few feet high, right, for one corner? That was only a few feet high, three, three feet high? Uh, 446, yeah. And then there are just some comments from uh, the consulting landscape architect for the village. Do they noted, I guess, that, that you were specifying a privet hedge on the landscape plan, and uh, oh, I saw that. that the privet hedge is an invasive species. Uh, right, that was and not clear off. Obviously, a head, so we'll we'll modify that so it's right. something that's more native. And similarly, I have a note about that some of the other species are not necessarily native, well, so we'll see how we can modify that so that we're uh, factoring in more indigenous plantings. Fine. Any other comments from any of the board members? No. Any comments from anyone in the audience? Yes, yes sir. Uh, before you come up, just uh, take a microphone, 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 please. I can give a message. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Dr. Kaki again. I spoke to the uh, board uh, last meeting. Uh, I think uh, the discussion that just took place here uh, sort of highlights uh, what concern, one of the concerns I had expressed at that time, which was that A, the water drainage study that is quoted in the papers goes back to early 2000. Uh, this was before some of the plans for developing this area were refined and so it may not really be relevant at this point. Number two, the discussion that took place now even uh, sort of further reinforces our concern, my concern, that uh, there is going to be a significant issue in terms of water runoff. I can look over the property. We've lived next door to it for the last, since 1971, and this proposed construction will be sitting at the high point and uh, covering f several thousand square feet is going to create runoff that is going to occur towards areas which are downhill from that high point. And we are in that downhill area to adjacent to the property that is being developed. So that was one concern. And I think the board, uh, I would request the board really to make sure that before uh, any consideration is uh, advanced on this, we should have a very clear understanding that there will be no uh, runoffs that are going to cause water problems to the neighborhood properties that we are going to regret 10 years from now, but everybody will throw up their hands and say, gee, sorry, it happened, and now what do we do about it? That was one concern. The other concern that I had mentioned, and the village authorities raised it themselves, is that there has been virtual deforestation of all the property uh, along our line. Now, even if you try to mitigate it, uh, mitigation really is probably meaningless uh, because uh, you're not going to recreate the beautiful trees that have been taken down. 
and uh, there is no requirement as to where these trees that the developer uh, will put will be placed. They might put them at a very convenient place up front, so we will be left with the aesthetic disaster at the back of looking at this, uh, this rather large building uh, just staring down at us with all those trees that were at one time there, part of the stone property that have now been denuded. So I, I, I don't know what this particular board, the planning board, can do to ensure that we really meaningfully look at what the board can and must require of uh, the developers before we proceed on, uh, on this. Uh, those are two concerns that I had raised. Uh, yes. The third concern that I had uh, forgotten to mention was the setback, uh, and the village has requirement for setback. Um, we have had a wall, uh, a fence along our property ever since we bought that property in 1971 that is set within the stone line that demarcates the property line. Uh, I've seen markers actually on the outside of that uh, particular stone line. Uh, I think um, what was pointed out to me is that this is something that I should talk to the, de the people who are doing the construction about to make sure that we have a clarification as to where the property line is. I think that is quite proper. But beyond that, there's the issue that if the village is going to enforce the setback distance the village will have to ascertain where that end of the property is because you cannot say where the setback line should be unless you know where the property line actually physically is. So those are the three concerns that I had and I would uh, just ask the board to please consider those as we move to, to, to value this application. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Could you point to where your property is? Um, I believe he's to this on Barbara Line? We're on Janet Terrace. Janet Terrace? Yep. Just a couple of Um, Here's Dream and Close. If I understand correctly, I think you're back this way. I think he's towards the left. I think he's more down in the, the, the hallway. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's where all the, that's that's where the runoff the, goes. The half the property drains to his right. broad right now, but they're actually going to be redirecting a large portion at the opposite direction, so it should be, should be better for you. Right. Should have less water. Right. I, I think we're going to collect it and bring it the other direction. We will be like based on the 2002 study that was no, based, based on the existing based based on the, design design. the current design. So we'll. So the engineer will be looking very closely at the runoff situation. We'll have our landscape architect take a look at what's being proposed in terms of the landscape plan, and this board will be looking at physically what what the house and the site looks like in terms of its impact on the neighborhood. Thank you. But I also think that if we should also look at the trees. what mitigation should be done for now your harm from these trees coming down. So part of this should also be, you should be part of, of this process as well. Yeah, I did offer in my letter to you, you need to use the microphone. I did in my letter to you, Mr. Chairman, I did offer uh, that I would be willing to engage with whatever organs of the village uh, that will be lo looking at uh, how we can best uh, meaningfully mitigate at this point. Well, I think at some point it'll be, it'll be up to the applicant to, to supply us with a landscape plan. And our architect will be looking at it. Our landscape architect will be looking at it. But I think at that point... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At that point, I think it would be appropriate for you to get together with our landscape architect and the developer's landscape architect and make sure that you're satisfied with what's being uh, proposed. So all the neighbors on our side, it's not just us, uh, we'll be kept in the loop, I hope. Yes, yes, well, and you know, it'll be before the planning board and it's posted on the village's website as to what's on the agenda for each particular month. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We're aware of where the trees came down, so we'll be looking at that. We'll be looking at that. Um, it may be valuable in terms of this tree discussion, and I don't know how that gets uh, scheduled. 
to do a little bit of a site visit walkthrough because there's discussion about deforestation. My understanding is there's, you know, seven trees that came down, and I'm not, I'm not belittling the impact of the trees that came down at all. But I want to. I think it would be helpful for us and our client, as well as for the board and neighbors, to have a clear understanding of what came down, what the real impact is, and so then we can come to a, a measured consensus about what needs to be done in order to address those um, issues. Right. If you want to do that, when we finally come to an agreement as to where the, the building will be sited on the property, and what the proposed height will be, I would suggest that you have your surveyor go out there and stake out the corners of the building, where it's mm -hmm. going to be. You, we did this with Westwood, as I recall. We re had the developer put balloons up showing what the, what the height of the buildings would be. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the neighbors can come out and take a look and see from their yards is, is where the building is going to be located and what the size of it looks like as it will be from their yard. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, uh, we're, I'm agreeable to that. Uh, it's going to be difficult in the summertime to get everybody together, but I'm around. But we all understand that, that the, the, the no tree came out in the conservation easement, right? We're, we're all aware of that. Right, but there might have been other trees that could have been saved um, that did come out. I don't know. I mean, you know, well, it's, I mean, we have, yeah, you know, you know, we're talking about trees that are gone now, and you're coming in with a site plan of a house, and the trees are gone now. But if the trees were there, and you came in with a site plan, well, maybe we say, well, we should, you should move that house to, take, to save some of those trees. So, uh, you know. Well, this, this is a very difficult site. And, and we have spent an incredible amount of time designing and nestling this house to, to work within the building envelope, to work with the rock, to work with the slope. So I think the reality of it is you, the house is sited so that it maximizes its views of the Hudson River. That's what it's. That's what it's yeah, doing, right? That's, yeah, yes. Okay, I mean, that, that, that is one of the things right. that, that was important. All right. So Absolutely. I think. You, you're, yeah, you're entitled to those views, but you're also um, responsible for making sure that the house is compatible with the neighborhood, too, and, and fits in. So right. But well, also, there was a neighbor here at the last meeting who expressed his desire and concern about the preservation of the rock outcropping. So we're, we're trying to balance a lot of significant interests in both what the client wants and also what is uh, in the interest of the neighborhood and the overall sure. property, so. Sure, I mean, but there are, others, there, are other, there are other site plans that would have worked there too, other houses that would have worked there too. It didn't have to be constructed or proposed the way it's being proposed. It's not the only site, it's not the only site plan that would work on that site. So I think you're gonna have to do things that will satisfy this board and the neighborhoods uh, neighborhood residents uh, in terms of what the final site plan will be. Any other comments? Any comments from anyone in the audience? Okay. Right. See so you. And if you want to set that up, if you want to stake it out at some point, or maybe you come back the next meeting after we talk some more and make sure you, you have the, um, because you're going to have to work on the height of the building and the coverage, correct? Those two. So when you come back with a site plan that's closer to what the final will look like, I think that if you want to set something up and take a walk out there uh, one afternoon or one weekend, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Would it be better for her to, for them to um, talk to the uh, our landscape person first in terms of replacing the trees that were cut? I mean, we can certainly sure, yeah. do that. Yes, and, uh, so certainly speak to Ms. Munns and see which what her suggestions are, but I think at some point I want to get the doctor in with you so that at least the three of you, maybe if there are other neighbors, your next door neighbor, if they, are I'm you right next door to the west, I don't okay. like to be there to see where that okay. wall is going to be. Fine. Yeah. And we'll just make sure that you're, they're all there and then you, if you want to meet with your ar landscape architect and our landscape architect, you can do that and see if it's satisfactory to, to the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I, but I think at first I think you should start firming up you know, what the final site plan is going to look like, and, and then we can do that well, a little bit more. I mean, you're going to have to, again, coverage is over, so you have, we have the issue of the wall, which this board is not uh, not happy about, shall I say, and then also, um, you know, the, the height of the building, too. 
that's going to have to be. Um, right. Well, we are. So. That's something we're already working on, and we think we have that uh, managed. And again, the coverage issue, we think, is just uh, it's a graphic question. We've, we've caught the numbers where we need them to be. So it was just yeah. a question of a graphic. Sorry. Wall too. Yes. That wall it was actually factored in. It was just wasn't patched to indicate that. So. So let's get a little managed. closer, and, and then we'll set up that meeting. Yeah, and and <clears throat> and I don't want to. Um, I mean, I, I, excuse me for my characterization, but you, you, it seemed to me that you took lightly the issue of the trees, and as I said earlier, there are citizens in this village who can't take down a dead tree without a process that is quite involved, and to take down five or whatever the number was live trees willy nilly. Um, is something to be concerned about. I was certainly not making light of the trees coming down. My only concern is in wanting to be clear as to what the perce perception of the trees is and what was in fact taken down. So there's a clear understanding of what the existing character of the property was before the trees were taken down, which will be clearly visible, right? Because there'll be trunks that were cut it's hard to visualize something that's not there. No, no. I what think, I mean is that the, the trees that were taken tell. down. You can't tell. No, no I, I think, I think all gone. the trunks have been removed. Yeah. They're gone. Uh, so we'll do our best to address so. those concerns. Right. Well, it's, it's the concern of the neighbors in addition to. Mm, yeah, right. obviously. Last yes. but not just so we're clear, <laughs> is that. Yes, Mr. Boyle. Very specifically, is that. Um, my big concern is is the bulk of this as I see it from the street, how it impacts both the street and others, so they everyone can comprehend this house. So that's why it's important to show to present to us however you want to do it in a way that my dumb eyes can comprehend. Oh, we'll come now. Well, we're, we're 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 working on the model, physical model, so we'll have that. I think that's going to help a, a lot. And we'll do the, the proper drawings. That Thank you. I think, I think besides a model, it might be good to have a section through your house to the house to the west of you and the house to the east of you. Fair enough. Well, to the right of us, there is no house. There's a house yeah. in the valley, which is, I guess, yeah. the, the one next to that. Two kind of, kind of, kind of goes around the bend. Two houses away. Two properties yes, away. Yes, there's that large, yes, yeah. Well, we're, we're going to be higher because our rock is higher than anything else. I understood, so, but to get a, a right. relationship, to understand the, 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 the relationship. To the Absolutely. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll do that as well. Okay. It's also a different house. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank Any you. Comments? All right. Thank you. Next item is 2017-17 Brian and Marcy Cuff 3 Oak Street. Are you, are you recusing yourself on this? Uh, Mr. Boyle's recused on this matter. Good evening. I'm Earl Ferguson of Ferguson Malone Architecture. And we're here representing uh, Marcy and Brian Cuff of 3 Oak Street in Burlington. That's in the Spiro Park neighborhood. It's in a one-family five zone. They have a relatively small house in the neighborhood that, and a growing family. So we're proposing to make a small addition onto the south uh, end of the existing building. The, uh, 
there's two, there will be two front yards in this case. One of them uh, is considered uh, along Station Road and the other one along Oak Street because it's a corner property. Um, the house and driveway are relatively close to uh, Station Road. There are some in that neighborhood that aren't that close and some that are. It's a very uh, mixed uh, neighborhood in terms of styles and sizes of homes. Um, the purpose of the addition will be for um, adding um, and making a new kitchen and a master bedroom bathroom on the second floor. It's a two-story addition um, that would add approximately 600 uh, square feet of living space to the existing house. Uh, the yard setbacks are existing non-conforming with the existing house and while we are building and proposing to build an addition over an existing deck, uh, uh, we would still be building within the yard setbacks. Uh, so we're very aware that we would be seeking a variance for the, uh, the the front, uh, the west, the west front yard, and the east uh, setback, side yard setback. Uh, the 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 um, if you wanted to hear some of the numbers, the uh, coverage, uh, the proposed coverage exceeds the allowable by 9.3 percent. Uh, and uh, it exceeds the existing by 5.6 percent. The we we inherited an existing cov uh, uh, coverage of uh, 3.6 percent uh, over what allowable would be. Uh, we're seeking another variance on a floor area, as the floor existing floor area of the house is is 99 percent of what the allowable would be um, the 600 or so the, it's actually less than 600 square foot um, a floor area of the addition would uh, put the um, floor area the proposed floor area some 27 percent uh, in excess of uh, allowable and as such, 27.5 percent of the uh, uh, above the existing. We realize that that's asking for um, a variance that would we would need to make a good case uh, with the zoning board, uh, and we would like to have the opportunity to do that. We've received Hans uh, comments and as well as. Um, Months Associates uh, comments, and we uh, will we will we will uh, uh, submit our written responses and drawing revisions uh, in direct response to those comments. I I did have uh, two points of clarification on on Hans' comments. I don't know if the board wants to address those right now or not. They're, they're really very simple. Uh, uh, one, it, it said that the application data sheet was incomplete, and it, was, it wasn't actually incomplete. It was, it was uh, not landscaped. Long. It was in portrait, so it cut off. Oh, it, it cut, actually cut off did on all the applications from your office this time, so that the uh, column is missing. I don't know if I got we got if I got that the other one. Oh. On the uh, is that the electronic or the uh, online uh, submittal? No, it was the it was a hard oh, copy. Oh, oh. All right, we'll we'll get that straightened out. Yeah, okay, we'll get that straightened out. And then uh, their item six um, asked for uh, uh, that the site is in in the view preservation uh, district, and we acknowledge that, and it said that we must uh, it must be published. Uh, because it's in the view preservation district, um, we we looked at the chapter 224-151, and uh, we couldn't see uh, any requirement for publishing this particular it's application. It's essentially in an odd spot. It's under um, 
It's under the site plan requirements. There is one, Chapter 224-69. Oh, well, it's there. Okay. Okay, yeah. I don't have my code with me, but okay. we'll, we'll look at it's it there. Then. If you want to call me tomorrow, I'll tell you exactly where it is. Okay. Okay. So. No, somebody actually copied it. What? One of the other applicants copied, actually copied it someplace in here. I'll find it. I thought it had to be over five acres before it needed to be finished. That's anyway, well, I'll call you. It's, it's in that paragraph that talks yeah. about the five acres and has other situations. And, okay. and I'm not sure. I think it may say west of Broadway. It may say view preservation, but it's in that same. Yeah, west of Broadway. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, we'll take care of that. And the comments from Munn's associates will also be addressed. Uh, they had asked that we identify the species of a tree that we had uh, suggested removing. It's a tree somewhere in this area where the entrance is to the house. And um, we will uh, we'll, we'll do that. We'll get it identified. But in, in, in addition to that, we'll try to preserve that tree if we can. I think that was one of the questions was, well, why was the tree being taken down? It didn't seem to be in the construction area or in the disturbance, the, the area of disturbance. Right. And, and there's a tree that's even closer that's that's not being taken down. That's not being taken down. This one here, yeah. Okay, so that will will address that. And uh, then uh, uh, Munz had uh, made the comment that the construction access and topsoil stockpiling is uh, to be sh uh, uh, shown. And um, I just wanted to point out to the board that that is shown on the drainage plan not on the landscape. Yeah, I, I saw that, and, and those trees are protected by snow fences. Uh, and, and is there enough root? No, down there. I thought that's where the construction access was, at least on the plans yeah. I have. Right. It was off of Station Road. Yeah, off of Station Road. And, and um, yes. get, it, 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 you have uh, one of those, one of those uh, sheets. Um, that, the drainage plan. No, that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, those are protected. And is there enough room for the construction access to get around between between the opening between the protection and the existing house? Well, they'll only uh, be able to take machineries up so far, and then there will have to be a lot of hand work done. Okay. The, I, I, I didn't scale it off, but what's the difference between the protection area and that and the corner of the house? We don't know, but we'll, we'll indicate that on our research. And how would they get to the back to do whatever they have to do with machinery, if they have to do anything with machinery? We're, we're going to use a combination of Can I see what other things are? Because you're going to need a foundation, right? You're, you're proposing a foundation yeah. for the addition, so you have to probably get some sort of small. Yeah, it's, it's it's very tight. We had another uh, project like that in the neighborhood. Uh, not too long ago, and they did have to do a lot of hand work. They were able to uh, pump some concrete, you know, from uh, a small machine and didn't have to go all the way back. And so we're using, th th this is where we're, most of it is, but we, we will be using the driveway as well to help support that effort. Uh, but we'll we'll give you some dimensions on the tree protection distance. It's away from the construction. And the other thing, my set of plans that in the elevations so to, to see how high the second floor is. It, it, you got you got numbers there. It's actually the same. It didn't copy well. There, there it is. This is existing. It's, it's at the same height. We kept it at the same height. What else, Mr. Chairman? Any other questions? No. Any questions or comments from anyone in the audience? No, I think, I think the only question I had, Earl, or concern that I had was the uh, 
increase in the floor area ratio of 27%. So then I, I went back and I looked at the analysis that you provided. And um, while the FAR is going to be on the high side compared to a number of homes immediately around this home, also your coverage is going to, is going to end up being a bit lower than those houses, too. So I think there, there's a, um, you know, an, an offset to, to the increase in the FAR. Your coverage isn't going to be as great as some of the coverages on, on the houses immediately adjacent to, like House B, C, and G, I think. Some of those houses, the, the coverage is higher than what you're, being, what you're proposing, but their FARs are lower. So I think there's an offset. I think they just have to make that case, I would think, to the zoning board. I, mean, I don't know if anybody else has, has any feeling about the FAR or the coverage of the particular proposal. So Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, we would like to uh, also uh, show uh, comparables for the neighborhood in general. And we can demonstrate how um, there are several, let's see, one minute. Right, well, that's what I was looking at. Se no, several that are also over FAR. Right. By si right. Significantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think th those aren't quite as close to you as, you know, uh, B, C, and G, I think, are the closest ones. Yeah. And those tend to have lower FARs, but their coverages are higher. So I think there's a balance there, so you can make that I, case. Right. I also asked John to take a look at the FAR calculation. I'm not sure it was calculated in the attic correctly, so it's going to take a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Low or high? Uh, I think it's a little bit. It might be existing. Might be so, so the might the coverage may be more than the other. No, they are making a lot of money. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. We'll get I that checked. I have an email showing the proposed section. Yeah. It's really existing. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments? No. Yeah. I guess you can take it off, go off to the ZBA with it, and then we're going to have to address the questions here. Well, can't, yeah, can't you can't go yet until September. Until September. September. So, John, we're going to have to get back to you with the, uh, right. the FAR issue. Yeah. Uh, All right. So. You mean? We'll yeah. see yeah. you can't make the August sum for anyway, so you'll be back here for the September planning board for, and then we can get you on the September either way. Okay. Thank you. See you in September. Uh, next item is 2017-16, Mark and Tara Steinberg, 5 Hugh Hill Lane. Carico with Cronin Engineer, representing Mark and Tara Steinberg in this application. Uh, their application is uh, for a uh, spa with a, and a pavilion building in their backyard and a slight enlargement of a blue stone patio, flagstone patio, with a uh, stone bench uh, and a fire pit. Um, the uh, proposed uh, work improvements uh, are a total of 491 square feet of impervious area. Um, we will require a coverage variance. Um, in addition to the uh, 491 square feet, uh, it's my understanding that when the lot was developed, it met the coverage requirements, but at that time, uh, stone walls walls were not included in the coverage uh, uh, calculation. Uh, so I've had to include them, and there are some fairly you know, extensive walls on the property. So 
that brings the uh, variance requirement up to just over a thousand square feet of coverage, of additional coverage. So that about existing six, almost 602, I think, was the uh, stone walls. Six, total. So 600, 600, 600 square feet? Two square feet of stone walls. Of stone wall, out of uh, how much additional square footage are you asking? Uh, 400 and something. 491 would, is, the, is the actual improvements. So I think it's, that's a total of uh, 1,029. Okay. Um, we've received comments from uh, Hon Engineering today, and uh, nothing I don't think uh, that can be addressed at all. Uh, we'll be, Doug is trying to find out some information on the, this drainage structure that was put in. Uh, with the development of the house, um, since I, I don't really have much information on it at all. Uh, right here is there's a drain inlet which picks up the uh, footing drains of the house, fairly deep, and then it also picks up the roof leaders and brings it to this structure back here, just in front of the wall. Uh, and I believe there's an overflow from that. It, I believe it's a detention structure and it has an overflow down to the existing system down in Harriman Road. Uh, found out today or yesterday that we will need to submit for a wetland and water course permit since there, the, this discharge to the Barney Brook uh, just comes onto the property. So I will do that uh, with the next submission. Um, we will also, I was also told that we need a FAR variance now um, because this pavilion structure uh, needs to be included or is included as FAR. Um, so we will so do that, that as well. I will calculate that. But it's fairly small, 221 square feet. Um, so I will do that. So it just, uh, it, it just sits on a slab? Right, it sits on a slab, uh, it's on top of the water and the gas line. Yeah, it's actually on piers, so it's it's got a, uh, a decking, uh, and then the the spa is you know not into the ground. It's not built into the ground. It's above, uh, but it does have you know, I think six piers. The architect couldn't be here tonight because he's at an ARB meeting in Ardsley, but uh, yes, that's my understanding. Uh, I can show you the architect's drawings. Well, I guess I, I just wondered why that side of the property rather than on the other side. Is there, is it access to the backyard? Is it water? Is it uh, why, why this side of the property instead mm -hmm. of this side of the property? Right. Um, I'd have to actually ask Mark yeah. Tara. Um, just the design. Yeah, I mean, I, I was given the design from the architect. But, you know, he laid it out, so that's, I'm sorry, I can't answer that right now, but. Okay. Um, <laughs> the drain line is, is really deep. Like I said, it's, it's, it's about eight feet here at the corner of the house, mm -hmm. and it gets deeper as it goes towards the backyard. Um, towards the back Privacy of the issue, too. Hmm? Privacy issue as well. It's more secluded on that side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go back to the, to the architectural, uh, you know, we have a uh, elevation here showing, looking from, from the backyard towards the house with the, with the uh, structure here. Uh, won't be able to be seen from the front, uh, from the street. I mean, the house is 128 feet back from the street as, as it is anyway. Um, that'll be back from the street, you know, uh, behind the house. Um, the, the architect has proposed some plantings that he's shown on his plan here uh, in some of the various views. Uh, we did get a uh, review memo from Ms. Munz, and uh, you know, she just, I think she only had two, two comments really, which was to um, uh, denote trees that are eight inch or greater in this area of the property on the side and uh, just show some tree protection plans in case they're needed on the plan, uh, tree protection detail, and uh, uh, show the drip line to see how, but I, I believe most of these are uh, conifers and they're, they don't go out, they don't extend out. So uh, uh, here is a uh, front view of the pavilion building. Uh, 
uh, it's <clears throat> got a gate here uh, as required by pool code. Um, this is the uh, this would be the rear the rear of the uh, pavilion, and this is uh, the side uh, looking from the house at the side of the pavilion. We'll have it's got about two thirds of a you know solid wall, and then the, uh, about a third with uh, open. So that's typical for both sides of the, of the structure. Um, that's uh, it in a nutshell. I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Uh, but like I said, uh, you know, we, we do have to uh, go to the zoning board, so that would be the next step for us. Any comments from my board members? So it's just a, it's just a hot tub in there, right? Right. It's not right. And you're not going to be able to see it from this. You're not going to be able to see it from Harriman because I don't believe you're going to be able to see it from Harriman. It's really pretty vegetated, um, no. and it's and it's much lower. Harriman's much lower. I'd say about 30 feet lower right. than, than the backyard here. Okay. Uh, but, but it is, you know, heavily vegetated in front of this retaining wall uh, and behind this retaining wall. <coughs> Will there be an independent heat source, or is it from the house? Uh, I would imagine it would be from the house. Has this property been to? Uh, it's a relatively new house, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's five years. Five years. Okay. Has have you been to the zoning board for anything previous to this? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Mm -hmm. So everything else complied at the time. Okay. When? So, uh, yeah. I mean, I. I yeah. This I survey that you see here is the as-built survey from when the um, house was built. Right. Because so. it, there's a. A nice long history of stuff that gets approved mm -hmm. and then magically comes back thereafter. And usually it's a pool, right. not a spa. So this this was the last house that was approved in the in the cycle. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it sort of was, you know, um, well that's just a process that one goes through, and and thereafter this board sort of kind of figured it out. And then basically came to the conclusion that no, when a new house comes here, it's always maxed out, yes. and and that's how it you know don't come back, so to speak. Right. So that's why I was asking if this is uh, an issue with if it's if they've come for other reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, this board's also been involved in the the change in the in the coverage issue. And so I think we're all pretty sensitive about that too, because that's just it's new and there's got to be a way to to figure that out. So I, I don't know what uh, how everyone else feels. So well, I was just wondering the the area you show in yellow there between the, the spa and yeah, right. is that added uh, deck or patio? Yeah, that's that's added flagstone patio. Yeah, and, right. and there's a patio that's already there. There is a flagstone patio that's already here with a barbecue in this corner. Was there is there a need to then add that additional patio? Or you, if you already have a patio out there, um, again because you're twenty, you're almost twenty seven percent over on, on coverage. Uh, you know, while well, I pull I mean, it in a little closer, or it would just what what is the purpose for that additional patio? I mean, it's my understanding that this is was really added just so you could get to this. You know, you would walk on something solid and get to the spa, and then walk to this side. You know, to get around to the uh, to the fire pit and the benches. Part of my issue is with this stuff is it's the blowback of the next guy that comes in and says, "Oh yeah, well, you gave him this, then you get in that." Sure. And that's part of the responsibility of the board is to sort of understand that from a specific this site and all that kind of stuff. No, I don't, it, it doesn't. I can see how it's not going to be an, an impact on the road, even though I can see those walls, typically when I go up Paramount. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that walls. tells me I'm going to see that roof of that thing. No, because uh, you can't see the house. I, I didn't think you could, yeah. but I drove by there again before the meeting tonight. And you can't, there, there are some evergreens back there, but they're kind of kind of sparse at this point. I don't know how well they're, they're doing. They don't seem to be filled out that much. And, it, and I think that structure will be somewhat visible from Harriman. Yeah. And you probably, if it, if it is go forward the way it is, the, Probably should do some additional landscaping at the rear of that house, uh, from Harriman, so at the top of that wall, or something like that. Yeah. Take a look at those. Yeah, yeah. An arbor, take a look at those 
those evergreens that are out there and see how well they're, they're really doing. Maybe there's something, some other types of uh, plantings that might do better. It seems to be a bit shaded back there. It might be some, something else that might do better in that location that will give you more screening. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have a problem with, with doing mm -hmm. that. Uh, I, mean, I know you raised a good point, George, and that's why I was asking too, is, what is, is there a need for having that additional patio? I mean, could, could you get the, the uh, coverage down to closer to 20% rather than 20, you know, 27%? I mean, the ZBA may have a problem with that too. I don't, I don't think they like, they're particularly amenable to you know, large increases in coverage. Um, that is substantially higher than 20%. So you may want to take a look at that. And I don't want to speak for them, obviously, but yeah, I think from our point of view, again, there is a patio out there. So could you just do one pathway then to take out to the spa rather than creating another additional patio out there too? Uh, I, I will talk to my clients right. and we'll, we'll take a look at that and see what we can do to, if there's anything we can do to reduce it. One more. Well, what's, what do you mean by a fire pit? Uh, stone fire pit. What are you yeah. burning? Yeah, we're with. Around and toast marshmallows. What are you burning wood? Sure. Cognac toast. I, I, I mean, this sounds like a silly question, but I, I believe the county has an open burning violation for that. There is a code you know, that fire pit needs the requirements within the, it's actually the, uh, New York State Building Code has removed it in the old version, not this version yet, and has pushed it off to the New York State DEC, which has similar regulations as the, uh, the New York State Building Code had in 2010. You really want to be specific, four feet wide, three feet high, a whole bunch of rules. So this ceremonial, is, so it doesn't eating. There's a lot this of, would not be considered open burning on the. I, I just sure. didn't want you to see the build yeah, something that you can't use. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's actually well. It's the, the health department coming around and says, oh, you're open burning. Any other comments from any board members? Any comments from anyone in the audience on this matter? No. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we'll see if you want to take a look, take a look at the, the issues that were raised here and then come back and then we can, then we can be at that point if you decide to reduce the coverage or whatever it will have look at the, some plantings and then come back and then go to the ZBA. We won't be able to go to the ZBA now until September. Also what? That's correct. So, anyway. Okay. So we'll be meeting in August. Yeah, I understand. August, so yeah, I understand. August. So you got two meetings. And, and we'll meet in September before the ZBA. Okay. Yeah. So we have two. Okay. Yeah, no, I understand the ZBA. We can't make the right. meeting because it's a 30-day uh, notice requirement in the summertime. Uh, so. Are they not meeting in August? No, there's a 30 day notice. If you had kept it on the 5th, it'd be fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right, thanks. on the agenda is uh, 2017-15 Roy Roos, 24 South Buckhouse Street. spaces next to our three-family house um, due to the lack of parking on the street and we were previously okay to remove the two spaces get a net gain of two additional spaces and um, basically um, we propose to um, raise the grade up to just a couple feet in the back and uh, the gravelled area and 
and um, I just received, a, or my engineer just received a information or engineering company comment from Han Associates. And so that's what we're trying to do, and a lot of its whole issue is a safety factor for our family and for our tenants. The street, it's, it's not the best street by not having to get, we might have been hit just by opening our car door, so it's a big concern of ours, and that's why I'm here tonight. Any questions, any comments from anyone on the board? So where was, where were spaces on the street taken off? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Right here in the front, and the drawings here that's kind of small, I guess, that's scale-wise. Now, there's two spaces there used to be a two-car garage here. That's been torn down a long time ago. There's still a curb cut there, although it was only one space that was took that space out. And that was done a long, long time ago. And how would how would the how would the four spaces inside be aligned? Would they be um, vertical they would be, or they would be straight in? Mm -hmm. And I think it's safer and easier to pull straight in and straight out and then. We designed that also because the factor of we didn't want to remove trees or landscape or green areas. So that way we still have a pretty decent sized backyard right. for kids to play. But you're going to have to enlarge your curb cut then. Yes. Before I proposed it. I have a page two on here where we propose the profile of the curb cut. And the curb cut's going to be approximately 40 feet wide, 38 feet. So, the depth. Go ahead. I just wanted to clarify one thing that Mr. Roos had said that it was previously approved. I think you were probably referring to the Board just of Trustees. The space removal. Yeah. The, the Board of Trustees did not approve the, the layout. The whole thing was subject to um, uh, site plan approval. The approval was conceptually would they approve the room? Because you, you, you can't just take parking spaces off. So what they said, yes, you could do it in exchange, but recognize that it had to be um, reviewed by the planning board for safety and all other reasons. Did they review this, this proposed thing? Only in the, but it, they, it was reviewed, but not to see whether it was safe or it was just conceptually four spaces instead of two. That was it. But this drawing they, is they did look at this particular plan, but it was not studied. So it, just to be clear, it's two public spaces creating four private spaces. Exactly. And the, that's what the board, and what was their reasoning to say yes to this? Oh, well, let me read it. I did, I did send around the uh, resolution. Let me no, no I, I got that, but was there, well, that's were there where comments the that... The, um, with the, the board um, had, stu I'm, I'm just going to read what they say rather than, um, get, the board studied the parking situation in the immediate area, solicited, solicited and considered the opinions of neighboring homeowners and determined that the elimination of two public parking spaces is outweighed by the advantage of eliminating four cars from parking on the public street. So that was the, pretty much the entire reasoning. Any other board comments? Boy, I'm, I'm no uh, parking expert, but having four cars now, like, yeah, I know that road is, is pretty, you gotta be careful because it really doesn't fit two cars when they're parked on both sides. So now we're gonna get four cars, they're gonna back out into that. Doesn't, seems to be even more dangerous because they gotta back out beyond the car that's parked right there in order to figure out if there is an area to go through. So for me, I get what you want to do, which is to get people for your house to be able to park uh, on this thing. But to me, it seems like we're making a bigger, dangerous situation. And that's why I was asking what, how this board, the board of trustees made their decision. Did someone kind of go through this or not? They just said in, in abstract, yeah, two cars versus whatever. Okay. There, were, there was really the extent of it. They never looked at safety. There was a scheme that showed where they would be, but they never did look at safety or traffic patterns or anything like that, assuming that would be done by the, the planning board. In the Han memo, the, the first point 
uh, in the Han Memo is the proposed parking layout creates an unsafe hazardous condition. The parking spaces are located in front of a sidewalk, which would require vehicles to cross the sidewalk to enter and exit the four spaces. In addition, the street is narrow, has parallel parking on both sides, and has limited visibility. We recommend the applicant provide an alternate parking layout. I think one that would have a narrower driveway coming out onto Buckout Street and provide parking in a different configuration so that you don't have four cars that are lined up ready to pull back out onto um, Buckout Street. Right? I think that's what you're getting at, Doug, right? Yeah. Yeah, another thing I want to add, though, too, also, is um, that, you know, of course, I had uh, figured out before, side distance is pretty good on site. There's other neighboring driveways, two cars, in some cases, three car driveways that are configured the same way, although they're existing. They may, some of them may have been there for a long time. So that's one of the things we kind of looked at. You can notice that you go up and down the street with other multi-family residents. It's the same way. So there's a lot of people back in and out already in the driveways. Are you talking about the gray? The gray? Well, just like a lot of people are just pulling another driveway, they go in and they back out, you know, right. on the same street where they only have a little bit of sight distance. Right, well, I think we're trying to, what I think the village engineer what some of the board members are getting at is that 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 is a hazardous that can be a hazardous situation and we don't want to exacerbate that situation by having the possibility of another four vehicles being able to back out across the sidewalk where pedestrians would be walking so I think again we're looking at take a look have your engineer look at a different layout that narrows the driveway and puts parking you know creates the parking farther into your site and I, unfortunately it may mean more coverage and and uh, more asphalt, but I think it creates a safer condition, is, is what we're trying to get at here. Um, you, and you could do down? it so they only lose one space on the street, too. Yeah, which would be preferable, That's too. Just a matter of trees, I guess, versus vehicles and spaces. Well, also, your, your backyard slopes, it's a big drop. Yeah, but there's that, a good It's going to require a lot of fill uh, right. for those spaces. Right. So the way this is, it's not nearly as much material to be brought in as four foot height on the lowest point. I understand, but I think that there's, that's the trade off of right. safety factor. But he does, you're, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but Roy. Roy, he, he comes, I walk my dog all the time on that road. And uh, you're right, there are other garages on there. And I'm trying to think, God, does anyone have cars in there? And I've seen them open Some in. Some are open driveways, too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to say for me, I didn't think of that, okay? And not that you want to make it any worse, but in essence, if you already have conditions like that, then is this really making it any worse or is it making it potentially better because now all the other people are pulling out, so many people will actually slow down. In a way. Maybe we can make the road one way. Strength in numbers. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. I think you have the traffic passing back and forth on South Buck Avenue, too, and, and then you have the cars backing out in addition. So right. that, it's also, it's also a two-way street. Space yes, right which is above, we can work on it. Yeah. Shops. There's a whole, there's like, well, the but anyone who drives on Buck out, I always call it, it's, it's when you know who's civic and who isn't. And it, I won't say it's 50-50, but because it, it doesn't, you can't pass. Someone has to go to the side to go through, and it's like our tunnel at Station Road. That you know, thankfully, most people, not all, don't. They're they're polite, and the same thing on Buckout. That someone's got to give to let someone go through. Um, so I don't know. I'm yeah, well, I think as, as cars have gotten bigger, it's become more difficult to drive on South Buckout in this location. And it might be that it's time for the village to consider that should this be a one-way street I'll and just redo the configuration. I, I've, <coughs> I've spoken to Larry Shump about one-way streets many times because coming out of Buckout Street onto Main Street, you can't see what's coming up the hill. Right, because there's a parking space right up right there. to the so, intersection. Right. So the we've been side. discussing the one-way street aspect for over a year, including um, Half Moon North. My, my, uh, Mike Hanner also discussed the one-way street aspect. 
What's the consensus for the board? Well, what's the, the did you look at the retaining wall? I, I, did we look at it? Yeah, the one yeah, right here. I don't know how big it is. Uh, There's a detail like on it profile. It's not very big. About four feet, a little bit over four feet at the highest point. It's a segmental. It's a segmental concrete block. Well, unless anyone on the board has a different foot, my, my thought would be just to have your, your engineer take a look at it and see what, what could be laid out if you just had um, a one, you know, one car driver coming out of there and have the cars be laid out, or the parking spaces be laid out on your on your lot with just a single um, driveway coming out, not to um, walk out. Right. The, the, four, the four is just challenging because <clears throat> you have to pull straight back out and what's what's the parking situation on the other side and how can you how can you turn without, I don't like know, conceptual? Like everybody else does on people that have all the other driveways. You can, right, you but, can only turn so much. Right, but other people have single driveways. Car. They yeah, single driveways. Well, two car driveways in North Buckout's got a couple of them. What about going, what so. about going back to, uh, you had, there was a two car garage on the property years ago. Mm -hmm. Why not just, you have two spaces? You've already well, got the curb cut. Yeah, you know, there's three family residents, so then somebody doesn't get space. You want well, the parking on the street then. Yeah. So you, if if you do what Sheila's saying, you'd only lose one space on the street, because that person would still park on the street. Right. And when the, I, all the people live at the half moon co-ops, and everyone has to park on the street every night. <clears throat> Both half moons have parking spaces available in the back, but not but not, not all room. units have. It, there's more people than parking spaces. Space. There's more there's units than parking. Right. right. Yeah. But you brought another good point, which is that it's a three-family, and perhaps <laughs> your engineer can figure out that a way to do it with three cars. Right. You know, that has to single driveway. Yeah. 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 We thought about the side view, but again, you know, it's a matter of trees. That's basically it. Doug, what's the standard latest version of uh, parking space with? As far as what size? Width of a parking space. Village code's what, nine and a half by 20? That's what the village code is. It's pretty tight. Pretty big. Uh, no, it's yeah, big. Yeah, it's yeah. big. Yeah. Right. The big. ones on the street are not even seven feet wide. Yeah. And they're 18 feet long. And it's people have like SUVs. Those are parallel kids are not in spaces. I, I would just ask that, again, unless uh, the board members object, to ha have your engineer take a look at coming up with some other alternate design where you don't have four cars uh, all having access directly onto the street and you know, reducing the driveway size. And also so, showing how it's going to actually work. Right? Yeah. How cars are backing in and, and going through. Yeah, backing out. Right. You right. know, you had said that, that other houses. But the, open in the front that a lot of people would back in initially. That's mm -hmm. what I used to do, a place I used to live in Grove, you know, in a busy street. So when I came in, I'd back and pick up in, and the nose always spaced out in the morning. I'm just like, oh. Well, what also would yeah. be helpful is an aerial or a site plan showing the locations of the other driveways north and south of you and across the street from you, so we have an idea of, you know, what's directly around this house right. in terms of other driveways. Right. Also, these other houses are much are older. They're older They're houses. Old. The driveways were used or not used, and the cars were smaller. <laughs> so even though there were two or three cars in the driveway, they were smaller cars. Now everyone has an SUV. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I think two things. I think one, if you have the engineer take a look at the alternate layout, and then also when we come back to have a little bit more in terms of site planning going beyond just your house to show what where the parking spaces are and where other driveways are in the immediate vicinity of yours. I think that would be helpful. Okay. All right. There's a whole other list of things in here. I don't really know if I need to go into it as far as the wetlands and just the I, water you know, so I think before we get to that, take a look at the ultimate okay. plan and let's see what works and then we can start addressing more sites you know, more engineering specific questions. Okay. Okay. You could have Elliot call to go through some questions here once Oh, yeah. So he would try to come to the next meeting. This is the first one. I figured there was going to be a few bugs to work out. But we have several choices there.
I want to minimize the coverage that was one of my right. objectives. My wife doesn't want the trees to be all taken out, although there's just two trees in question. Let's see what we can get. Okay. You got it. Uh, next item is 2017-18, Barbara and Rodkin Cohen, 21 Matheson Park. Ferguson, Ferguson Malone, architects. Uh, we're, we're representing uh, Rajan and Barbara Cohen um, uh, at uh, 21 Matheson Park. Uh, th this property is um, is in a, uh, a one-family 60 zone. It's uh, it's, like, it's like five acres, um, and it, they have a quite a long driveway. Um, this, this is the one that down on Bridge Street, right? You know, as you enter, or actually, that's not an entry anymore. It's just they, they, the people who live here can enter there, but it's not a thoroughfare. Um, uh, they need to uh, create three turnouts uh, on, on the side at various locations on the side of the existing driveway. The uh, proposal is to make those turnouts uh, pervious surfaces. I think there's uh, maybe a concern on the part of the board about um, coverage in general, even though driveways are not considered uh, coverage in the code. Uh, there's been some uh, uh, discrepancies uh, in, uh, in our uh, submittal. Uh, on the, the amount of uh, impervious surfaces, even though m most of it really uh, relates to driveways and turnarounds and that kind of thing. Uh, the, um, the, the, the the purpose for the uh, turnouts is really so that two vehicles can pass, two vehicles moving in opposite directions can pass so somebody doesn't have to back all the way out again to uh, allow the passage. Um, the, uh, we, we received uh, comments from Han Engineering on this, and uh, they had pointed out that there was some undocumented items that needed to be identified and legalized as a part of this op uh, uh, application. We were kind of hoping we could do that offline or with or directly with the uh, building department uh, because uh, there are discrepancies in the submittal between pre-coverage and um, and um, post-coverage diagrams that we submitted. Uh, I emailed you the old survey. Yes, there, there's some uh, uh, undocumented um, uh, information that we have to add to it uh, versus the work that was approved in 1996, it turns out. And you give me that other uh, the, the, the highlighted one. Uh, now that's just on the it's on the survey. Uh, but anyway, uh, I guess uh, all I'm saying is that we will be back with uh, that information. Any comments from any board members? No. Any comments from anyone in the audience on this item? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, would you please come up and take a microphone? And yes, Catherine yourself. Gross, and uh, we're directly to the uh, south of Cohen's. I didn't see on the plan any uh, indication of more lighting, if there is going to be any, and um, along the turnouts, and I hope there isn't. But I would want the architect to uh, be very cognizant of uh, the drainage and have it go towards Cohen and their beautiful trees where they need the drainage and not toward me, which is uh, where I'm 30 inches lower than their driveway. And Could you show me where your house is on, on the plane? Right here. Sorry, I can't see it. 
Okay. Right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my driveway is 30 close. inches lower than their, than, excuse me, my basement is 30 inches lower than their driveway. Okay. So all the, run, all the runoff would come down toward me, which I wouldn't be a good idea. Is, so, is, is, is that an existing, Mr. Chairman, may I is, is, ask if that's an existing condition that needs to be mitigated? It doesn't, no. It, the, drain, the drainage, the drainage before uh, this area was repaired uh, was very bad, and it all used to come sloping down toward me. Now it's fixed, and I hope it stays that way. Oh, okay. So, so you're not fixed. experiencing a drainage problem now? Not now. No, okay. Not now. And so, how is the um, that the closest turnout is the third one in? So how how is that? What's the uh, slope there? How's that side. pitch? It's pitched towards the uh, west. field. Yeah. I think it's pitched to the west. Or towards the north. Uh, uh, like well, west towards the river. Oh, no, most of it. And the work is running coast. downhill. You know, it's running, yeah, it's running downhill. Okay. And what they're doing is they, they made pervy, uh, pervy, permeable pavers, but they did it according to the DEC manual. So it's yes. like 18 inches of gravel. Everything goes in. It's not. It's not changing any drainage. No, I wasn't worried like about the uh, impervious uh, or the pervious pavers. It's just resurfacing the whole driveway. Is that going no, to be that's, changed? Nothing's that's changing. There's no grades changing or anything. No okay. grades are changing, just re resurfacing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And, uh, and uh, uh, Catherine, I think you mentioned lighting. And lighting. Uh, because um, there used to be lighting that, that shone right in our bedroom windows, <coughs> which was not good. And now that has been taken away, and I hope wouldn't be put back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there any lighting proposed? I didn't see any no, in the plan. No, it's not, not part of the application. I right, just so there's some undocumented areas that have to be identified. Yes, we, we went over with John, so he told us that. Okay. That's it? All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Item is 2015-32 Barclay Country Club. Good evening, Michael Cunningham from the law firm of Zarin and Steinmetz here tonight on behalf of Ardsley Country Club. With me tonight is Rex Gedney from Crozier Gedney Architects, Scott Blakely from Inside Engineering, Andrew Ballant, General Manager, and Danielle DeVito from Crozier Gedney Architects. Um, tonight we're here to ask you to approve minor site plan amendments to the site plan approved by your board in November 2015 to help rebuild the clubhouse. And um, the minor changes include a new a new utility yard, a new location for a dumpster, minor amendments to the topography of the practice putting green, restoration of the front entry circle of the property, converting the outdoor grill air, grill and dining area from temporary use to permanent use, removing the north loggia, and other minor grade changes. And before handing it off to Scott Blakely to go through the changes in a little more depth. Um, I know yesterday some members of your board, including the chairman, Mr. Ty, as well as Ed Marin and uh, Ms. Tesich, made a site visit to the property. And we also understand that Han Engineering issued a memo stating that there were um, multiple improvements and each were minor in nature, and therefore they had no comments. So assuming we're able to successfully answer all your questions tonight, we would ask your board to vote to approve the minor site plan amendment. And uh, with that being said, I'll pass it off to Scott. 
Good evening. Um, as Michael mentioned, uh, there were a series of, of modifications um, made um, to the plan, um, some of which included the modification to the putting green. There was an existing putting green located here. Um, putting green was removed um, and replaced with temporary offices and trailers for operation of the club. Um, facility while they were going under, uh, while the building was undergoing renovation based on the fire that had, had happened at the site. Um, those temporary trailers were removed and um, the putting green was was re regraded, recon reconfigured um, in basically the same location. Um, there was a dumpster enclosure added in a location here. Um, this location was chosen because of the direct access off of this aisle. Um, it's fully fenced. We did supply um, photographs of the dumpster enclosure, also of the um, Bud Green. Um, the utility yard that um, Michael mentioned is located at the base of this slope, adjacent to the curling building, down in this location. Um, the electric yard has the new transformer, the generator, and other switching equipment. Uh, that was located in this location. Um, we're also proposing modifica slight modifications to the reconfiguration of the existing circle. Um, it, it's basically the same circulation pattern, um, same number of parking spaces. Um, what we did was we're proposing to recurb the curbing in the pavement in this area was was somewhat removed during the um, process of reconstructing the building. Um, it was used as a staging area. Um, so what what the club is proposing to do is to is to relocate the curbing that was located in this dash line here. I know it's tough to see from there, but you, on your drawings you should be able to read it. Um, and we're basically just widening this access drive to provide um, two-lane access. So if somebody were to pull up and drop off um, valet park or whatever, they still have the ability to get another vehicle by directly in front of the building. Um, so this is slightly widened by about eight feet. Um, there was some slight reconfigurations just of the, of the access um, at the member's entrance here. Um, but that was impervious surface to impervious surface. So this, this we worked out for ADA compliance between the two buildings. Um, it's minor site change. The um, outdoor uh, grill and dining terrace um, that were installed as a, as, a, as a temporary use are now proposed to remain as a, as a permanent use. Um, for the peop for the members or of the of the commission that were out there and saw that um, you know this this area was an impervious surface. Um, it was basically a no net increase in impervious surfaces associated with this. Um, this area was was the, the the access to this was redefined um, and was actually pulled in a little bit um, from its temporary condition. And the last item um, was some regrading on the on the west slope of the site. Um, again, there's some photographs, um, and that's the back side of the clubhouse building. And that's in this area here. Um, and that was there was utility connections that were made. There was a, a, a new water connection. Um, sewer connections made, um, uh, some modifications around the propane tanks. Down at the bottom of the slope um, is where we installed the infiltration system for the increase in the imperviousness from the building. Uh, that was installed for the approved plans um, uh, by the board. I think uh, you didn't mention about the, uh, did you mention about the transformer location? I did. That's, that's what we refer to as the, as the electric yard. Okay. Um, and that's down at the bottom of the slope by the, curl, by the curling building. 
Where are you going to put the new dumpster? Where was that? Um, the that new dumpster is, is located right here. This is so on the other side of the parking. Yeah, on the other side of the parking, um, fully enclosed um, with a, a fence, and there's a where photograph what? of that. Where was it? Good evening, Rex Skedney. The, the the dumpster used to be right adjacent to oh. the building here, um, and was actually the source of the fire to the clubhouse. So, being a little sensitive to that, the further the way, the better. Um, so, its location, it's been temporary. Uh, it's worked very well for the club, uh, and it, it makes a lot of sense. So, we're just it is enclosed and screened. Okay. So that's the best location. And they also talked about, last time we talked about the uh, second means of egress off that patio. Yes. So, um, Scott, I don't know if you have another comment. Second. Is, is, is the, no, that's not the dining room. Third page. Oh, I'm sorry. It is shown on here. It's just right at the break point. So this, the, the patio that's here now, it existed, we did modify it. Um, originally we had a, a, an exterior lozier that ran across here. That was eliminated. Um, but we still need to provide a, an emergency means of egress off of the patio. Um, so that, that is in this location here. So you don't have, you don't have a patio in the back anymore that's open, right? We have a patio that's in, on the west elevation. Mm -hmm. So yes, the patio that okay. existed is still, still there. there. But it's enclosed now. Well, actually, mm -hmm. the main patio that was kind of walking over that is enclosed. Um, but there was also a, an exterior patio adjacent to their dining room that was right. always open. Right and that remains open. There was a slight modification, expansion to that, that was approved on your original right. site plan. And, and your, the, the temporary um, dining area is by the, Here. it's by the golf house, right Correct. down at the pro shop, pro shop down Correct. at the bottom, right there. Okay. Correct. So during, again, during the club, what this was completely out of commission. Right. There was an outdoor grill that was constructed here, and they were able to have uh, functions. Um, it was successful, membership liked it, so we'd like to try to maintain it. It's just a seasonal outdoor barbecue grilling area for events, outings. Because you, you also had an inside area that's, that was in the clubhouse or next door? Uh, it, in, the, in the lower level of the, um, of the pro shop where the bags, the golf bags were stored, mm -hmm. they were vacated and we used that area as a temporary dishwashing, food storage, and, and so forth. Okay. That was all permitted under a temporary basis. That's all right. been removed at this point. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Were there any complaints by the neighbors <laughs> since the temporary uh, stuff has been done? Um, I can't say if there was complaints. Maybe the general manager could speak to it, but I do not believe there were any related to this activity of the temporary uses. So no complaint about, I'm just asking if that there were any neighbors that complained about smoke or anything like that. Jordan, we're not aware of any. The only complaints we have are the rock hammering during the construction. Okay. And it's not really close to any I, I, I totally oh, okay. get it. I'm just... I didn't realize this. So I asked yesterday because that to was my, absolute, my question as well. Right. And I remember that when you got approval, there was concern from the neighbors as they're clueing in about the noise, especially during events. And I think we required you to do some something with the windows and things like that to mitigate that somewhat. That's correct. And I think that was related to the... The, the dining area that was right. basically an awning facility. Mm -hmm. Now it's completely yeah, fully yeah. enclosed. Right, and that's why I was just asking that all this work happened and what was the outcome from the neighbors. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the board members? No. Anyone from the public have any comments? No. Uh, Leslie said yes. Sheila and I were out there yesterday, and I think uh, Sheila, do you have any other comments? No, I think the uh, reconstruction has been fabulous. Done, and the matching of the brick, which I mentioned yesterday, was is excellent. Thank you. I think the only comment I would have, though, is that 
just need to get those electrical conduits in and completed and covered back up and get that hillside stabilized where it's running down and onto the transformer pad. But other than that, I think everything will look fine out there. Yeah, they're working on that daily. Okay. So if no one has any comments, then Marianne, do you have a, a yeah, resolution? Yeah, I do have one. Um, um, was on November 4th, the planning board granted site plan approval to the IOC Country Club to restore its clubhouse following fire damage in December 2014, along with expanding the second and third floors of the clubhouse to comply with current New York State Building Code and ADA requirements, expanding the existing dining room on the first floor and expanding the terrace areas in the rear of the clubhouse. Of course, um, the Country Club is coming back is coming close to completing the restoration work and has applied for minor amendments to the approved site plan, namely creating a new utility yard, relocating the dumpster, minor regrading, restoring the front entry circle, converting the outdoor grill and dining area from temporary to permanent use, and installing a second means of egress at the north elevation of the clubhouse. Hahn Engineering reviewed the plans and then a memorandum dated July 10th stated that it had no issues with the amendments. Planning Board held a public hearing tonight, whereas the amendments are minor and do not require additional review under CEGRA. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board grants the application for amended site plan approval as reflected in the drawings entitled Largely Country Club. The drawing subject to one um, submission of a stabilization planting plan to be approved by Lucille Munns, the village's landscape consultant, and two, identification of trees to be removed and replacement trees to type and location of which must be approved by Lucille Munns. Right, was there something about the stabilization too? That's the first thing. Submission of okay. a stabilization planting plan to be approved by Lucille. Okay. You know, I do comment about the electrical comment. For that kind of Pardon me? Well, that, that was that stabilization. Yeah, the, oh, okay. yeah, there's a hillside where there, there are major electrical conduits coming down to that transformer and it was exposed. Just that. The thing is, though, that the way it's, it's situated, it comes down the hill and it slopes, it turns to the left. And there's a berm that's been created for the work so that any of the runoff is going down towards the transformer pad. It isn't running off at this point, but they just need to get out there and finish it off and, okay. and stabilize it. So can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, just a clarification. The stabilization plan you're referring to the area where the utility area is? Yes. Yes. Aye. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's it for the scene. Motion to uh, adjourn. All in favor? Aye. That's it. We're adjourned.